you know, the whole Bible, uh, I mean, the Gospel of Matthew is concerning the kingdom. And we have gone through uh, chapters 5, 6, and 7 concerning the constitution of the kingdom of the heavens, which is very important, especially uh, the first uh, from chapter 5, 3 to 11, right, concerning the nature of the kingdom people. It's so important. And may the Lord really uh, help us to get into it. It is not just doctrines and teachings, but it must be our experience in our daily life, in the family, at work, in the church life, wherever we are. This must be our reality. You live as a citizen of the U.S. here in the States, so you have to do everything according to the law, the Constitution. It's very important, and of course today, there are a lot of politicians who want to get rid of the Constitution, or even change the Constitution. Uh, you cannot do that. Right, uh, and how much more we must love the heavenly Constitution. You have to memorize it, really. And uh, it's a very short constitution, three chapters. It's not very complicated. Right? And especially chapter 5, concerning the nature of the kingdom people. Right? And we need Christ to, to really be able to live such <coughs> a kingdom life. And then we have covered chapter 13, the mysteries of the kingdom which is also very, very important. And we have oftentimes talked about the last two chapters, not at the very end, but chapters 24 and 25 concerning the coming of the kingdom, the manifestation of the kingdom, which talks about when the Lord returns, firstly, there's going to be a rapture. In chapter 24, you have the two that are alive because they are still work working on the field. One is taken, one is left behind. And two grinding, probably sisters grinding right, together there. It says one is taken and one is left behind, meaning to say not everybody will be raptured as taught in many places. And then you have the ten virgins. The ten virgins. Five are wise, five are foolish. They're all virgins. The unbelievers are not virgins. The Lord will never use uh, the unbelievers there. I mean, calling the unbelievers virgins. No. I definitely not. <laughs> And they are all there waiting for the coming of the bridegroom. Uh, no unbelievers will wait for the, for the Lord Jesus as the bridegroom to come, right? I don't think you will ever find an unbeliever who says Jesus Christ is their bridegroom. <laughs> no. And they have lambs. That means their spirit are alive. They're born again. And the only difference is that five are wise and the other five are foolish. Right. All are believers, so we have to be the wise virgins and not to be the foolish ones. And the wise ones, they prepared the oil. Every day they gain oil. They gain the Holy Spirit to fill their being. The Bible talks about being filled with the Holy Spirit. And the foolish one, they didn't care. Right. And because the bridegroom delayed his coming, they all slept. That means they all died. You know, when Christian died, the Bible didn't say they died, but they slept because they 
rise again in the morning. When you sleep tonight, early in the morning you rise again. <laughs> There's resurrection. Right. So that's not the end because there is resurrection. So all of these ten virgins rose from the dead when the bridegroom comes. But only five enter into the wedding. The other five did not enter. It corresponds very much to Matthew chapter 7. Many who says, Lord, Lord, have we done this and that and so much? The Lord says, I don't recognize you. I don't know you. Only those who did the will of the Father in heaven, they will be qualified to enter into the millennial kingdom. The book of Matthew is very clear about that. But then, where in the book of Matthew does it say how the Lord is going to build his kingdom today with us? Because the kingdom cannot be only when he appeared again the second time. Uh, remember in Luke chapter 17, the Jews were asking the Lord Jesus, well, when are you coming? When is the kingdom coming? Actually, the Lord told them, the kingdom will not come now at your time by observation, because behold, the kingdom is now within you, each one of us who are a believer. Because now the king dwells in us. We're born again. We are sons of the kingdom, citizens of the heavenly kingdom. Not only when the Lord comes back, but today. Right? Today in the church, the Lord clearly shows us is his kingdom today. We all live in the United States, at least not all of you. There are some who came from other, other countries. We all know if you live in this country, you have to follow the law of the country. Even in driving, you cannot just say, I, I, I like to drive in the other side, there's no traffic. <laughs> if, I, I, if I drove on the right side, there's so much traffic, I'm going to go to the other side and drive. You cannot do that. It's dangerous. Not just dangerous, oh boy, you're going to be fined. And you're going to lose your license. And you might even end up in jail. You cannot just do anything you like. Even parking. You cannot park anywhere. Just a simple thing like parking. You cannot. And you have to pay taxes. You cannot say, I don't like it. It's too high. Why should I pay 8.5%? I just want to pay half a percent. <laughs> you cannot. You cannot. If you do that, somebody's going to call the police. That's right. Sorry. Right. Uh, so you have to follow the law of the country. But today, people are lawless. But can you imagine in an earthly kingdom, anywhere, unless it's a lawless country, okay? Right. Here in the States is a country of law. You have to follow the law. But how about in the heavenly kingdom? There's no law. You can do anything you like in the heavenly kingdom. You think it's okay? Our Lord is more righteous than anything else you know on this earth. Now, let us read <laughs> Hebrews chapter 1. How about that? Would you like to read Hebrews chapter 1? Right? Hebrews chapter 1. Yeah. Verse 8 and verse 9. Of course, let us firstly read verse 3, just as a background. Who being the brightness of his glory and the expressed image of his person, in upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself 
purged our sins, what did he do? He sat down in Jerusalem, in Galilee. He sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high. He ascended to the throne. Our Lord Jesus Christ today is sitting on the throne as the king. Revelation chapter 1 says, He is a ruler over the kings of the earth. His position is very high, the highest in the universe. Yeah. So, in verse 8, But to the Son, the Lord Jesus, He says, Your throne, O God, is forever and ever. A scepter of righteousness is the scepter of your kingdom. Wow, it's a scepter of righteousness, not lawlessness. Today in the Congress, oh, it is a big mess, unfortunately. Right? And then it says, you have loved righteousness and hated lawlessness. This is our king today. Can you imagine if you have president of the United States that is a lawless man, like somebody we knew before? Legalizing a lot of lawless things. You think our Lord is like that? If our Lord, who is the head over all things to the church, is not like that, how can the church be like that? Kyle, what do you think? Right. If our head, the head of the body, the church, love righteousness and hate lawlessness, do you think we in the church life today can just do anything we wish to do? It, if so, that means we don't know our king. We don't know him. That's why this question is important. Who do you say that I am? Oh, if you just say, you're our Savior, you're my Savior. It's because we know, oh, Lord, save me. Oh, oh Lord, help me. Oh, Lord, do this for me. Oh, Lord, do that for me. Oh, he's our Savior, right? But is he only a Savior? What about today? And in Hebrews chapter 5, he is today our great heavenly high priest, according to the order of what? What is the order of Melchizedek? What? King of? King of righteousness. And is that all? And the king of peace. If we say that he is our great heavenly high priest, what kind of a great heavenly high priest do we have? And he's the great high priest, and we are the priesthood today. We have to practice the priesthood. So can you practice a priesthood in any way you like? You sure? Oh, but we are free. To freedom, God has set you free. Oh, you can... Uh, right. No. It is not that kind of a freedom. It is free from the slavery of sin, free from your flesh, free from yourself, free from lust, from the dominion of sin and death, set free from the law of sin and death. That we are free. And we become a prisoner of the Lord, so to speak. Now we serve the king. If you're serving, where are you working now? IBM. IBM. Okay. Are you free to do anything you like? <laughs> working for IBM and you sell Microsoft <laughs> and you sell Apple. 
I tell you, you should not go to IBM office with an Apple shirt. Uh, you'll be in trouble. <laughs> Definitely be in trouble. I heard from somebody who works for Coca-Cola before, you cannot talk about Pepsi-Cola. <laughs> if you do, you are in trouble. You cannot be caught drinking a Pepsi-Cola. Pepsi <laughs> if you do, you better do it in secret. How can we be in the heavenly kingdom and do lawless things? You think you can get away from it? You think the Lord wouldn't see you? You think you can hide from him? Our Lord sees everything. He's a searcher of the heart. He even knows your thought miles away. Even before you speak what you want to say, he already knows what you want to speak. Have you read what Psalm 139? And you have no place to hide. Where are you going to hide? You go to the North Pole, he is there. You go to Mars, he is there. And even if you hide yourself in, in hell, he is there. He will know where you are. <laughs> you cannot... You cannot hide from him, right? Oh, I know, y you all memorize Psalm 137, right? Uh, uh, 39, right? Yeah, you cannot hide from him. But today, it's because we don't know such a Christ. That's why we are very free to do whatever we, do, we want to do. I go wherever I want to go, do whatever I want to do, I don't ask him, I don't s uh, ask the Father whether it's well-pleasing to him or not. No. But we have our Lord Jesus Christ, when he was on this earth, he says he never did anything that is not well-pleasing to the Father. He said, Father, I know you hear me because I always do the things that are well-pleasing to you. Well, what about me? Sometimes. Not always. Can any one of us you say we always do the things that are well pleasing to the Father? I don't think so. And we think we are okay. Are you okay? <laughs> right. But praise the Lord, we are on the way. We need to be transformed. Amen. We need to be saved day by day to the uttermost. Hebrews chapter 7 says, He is able to save us to the uttermost. Praise God. Never made any mistakes? <laughs> <laughs> Your father-in-law made a lot of mistakes. That's me. <laughs> but praise the Lord. There's much grace and time for us to be saved, to be transformed, and to go on. But we have to redeem the time and take the opportunity. Yeah. Right? In the heavenly constitution, the Lord says, Oh, you need to watch out for the what? The speck. The speck? How big is the speck? Uh, Less than a millimeter. Oh, you can see my speck <laughs> even without your glasses. <laughs> but your own what? Plank. The big beam you cannot see. Praise the Lord. I tell you many times, I just like to close my eyes and not see anything. Isn't it good? When I see Jasmine, I close my eyes. And <laughs> <laughs> I have a...
perfect granddaughter. <laughs> Isn't that good? Right. We want to learn to see Christ. See, there are many wonderful aspects in all the brothers and sisters. Learn to see Christ. This is what Paul says, I don't want to know people according to the flesh. In the kingdom, we have to learn to do that. Praise the Lord. This is really wonderful. This is the constitution of the heavenly kingdom. You know, if the Lord will see all of your mistakes, you are in trouble. I will be in trouble. But I really love the new covenant because in the new covenant it says, and their <laughs> sins will I remember. Are you sure? No more? Are you sure? Praise the Lord. You can rest assured because it's a covenant. Even the Lord signed it with his own blood. It's unchangeable. Isn't that wonderful? Then why will you not forgive me? That's right. So in this heavenly kingdom, let me tell you, forgiveness is very necessary and wonderful. Unless you are perfect. You're going to get married soon. Learn forgiveness. <laughs> you will have a perfect marriage. And that's right. That is right. Praise the Lord. And this is the kingdom life. This is the kingdom life. God's kingdom, the heavenly kingdom, is a wonderful kingdom. And we need his life. And this kingdom is being built today. And our brother read to us Hebrews chapter 12, verse 22. We have arrived, we have come. Not we will go, but we have come to Mount Zion. Eh? The church is Mount Zion today. The city of the great king. The song that we sang. Right. So behave as a citizen of the heavenly kingdom. Isn't that wonderful? Right. So may the Lord open our eyes. I don't want to be used by Satan to destroy the church. In the past 50 years, I've seen too many cases. You too. You, you just testified, right? right? Of all the people Satan chose to influence Jesus not to go to Jerusalem, to die and suffer, who do you think is the best, the most qualified one? If he chose Judas, Satan is so wise, he will know the Lord doesn't care for Judas that much. But Peter, one of his, one of his favorite, because the Lord brought them, Peter, James, John, up to the mountain. So Satan thought he is very wise. I use someone that the Lord Jesus like. Hey? Don't think you are a wonderful person, wonderful Christian. You have been in a church life for so long, Satan will not use you. You are his top candidate. <laughs> Let me tell you, in 2010, you all read that conference that we held in Bangkok, the mystery of the Seven stars. Most of the 
problems of the churches are not caused by the saints, but caused by the elders, the responsible brothers. Yeah. If Sister Anne caused some trouble, it will not influence the whole church. Right? But if I cause trouble, I tell you, <laughs> it will influence a lot of people, cause a lot of people to stumble. So who is Satan going to use to destroy the church in Fountain Valley? And <laughs> you're right, John. <laughs> Praise Lord. Right. So in the church life today in God's kingdom, we need to have some discernment. And this discernment doesn't mean that, oh, I'm going to uh, watch out for everybody. No, no. But we have to discern what the enemy is doing. We are not, we should be like Paul. Paul says, we are not ignorant of Satan's strategies. But many times we are ignorant. And so we fell into traps and troubles and problems. Right. So did the Lord rebuke Peter? Tell me. Sorry, he did not rebuke Peter. He rebuked Satan. Get thee behind me, Satan. He didn't say, Peter, get lost. <laughs> that is not very good. <laughs> the Lord loved Peter. And he knows Satan tried to shift Peter like wheat. But what does the Lord say? But I pray for you. Oh, my. It's a wonderful answer. When you see a situation, do not condemn. Don't accuse. Pray. The Lord told Peter, but I pray for you. Amen. Praise the Lord. This is really wonderful. This is the kingdom way. Today we want to prepare for the kingdom. We need to learn the kingdom way. We don't learn the kingdom way, then there is no other way to make it into the kingdom. So the Lord rebuked Satan. Get thee behind me, Satan. He didn't say, get thee behind me, Peter. Get thee behind me, Satan. For you mind not the things of God, but the things of man, meaning to say the things of the natural fallen man. Right. So the Bible has this wonderful principle of transformation to change us. Not overnight. Nobody can be changed overnight. But day by day, through the Spirit indwelling us. That's what 2 Corinthians chapter 3 tells us. The more you behold the glory of the Lord through the Word, the more you will be transformed into the same image. And it's from glory to glory. A little bit more today, a little bit more tomorrow. After half a year, you see more changes. And perhaps you won't even notice it, but surely your roommate will notice it. Wow, Maria really changed. <laughs> and, and maybe the other way around. Well, surely too. How about that? You know, she's my sister. She changed. 
from several years that before she came into the church and after she came into the church life. Praise the Lord, it's different. And that's normal. That should be normal for all of us. Christian life not changing and not being transformed is not normal. Can you imagine Sarah after 21 years still remains like this big? <laughs> will you be happy? No. Oh, you will think very cute. <laughs> <laughs> it's very cute. <laughs> No. A lot of changes. My, my, my. Is very different. Very, very different than 20 years ago. Because it's living. Whatever is life, if the life of Christ is within us, the proof that he lives in you is your change. This table will never change because it's not living. Even after a hundred years later, unless the wood wormers <laughs> destroys it, it's going to remain like that. It's not going to grow an inch or, or a millimeter. It's not going to grow. Toby, has you ever been so tall since you were born? <laughs> no. No. So in this kingdom life, the only way that can build the church life is transformation. And this transformation takes place by you going through death with Christ. Like Paul says, I have been crucified with Christ. And it is no longer I that lived, but Christ lives in me. Right? And if Christ lives in me and it's no longer I, then I will be changed gradually, day by day. The inner man will change, be renewed day by day. Praise the Lord for this wonderful kingdom. It's alive. It's living. No wonder Peter says, as living stones, not dead stones. We are being built together into a holy and a spiritual temple. It is something that is spiritual, not fleshly, but it's spiritual. And the holy priesthood, Peter also said in First Peter chapter 2, it is a royal priesthood. Because we are supposed to be kings and priests unto God. But to be a king, you have to firstly learn to be a priest, to experience Christ as the reality of all the offerings. This is the, the most practical way for us to be prepared. But unfortunately, many people don't like to do it. Okay, the Lord will never force us. This is why we need to know him. This is why we need to pray, Father, reveal your son more and more in me. Amen. Blessed are the poor in spirit. We don't have a poor spirit. We have an excellent spirit. But our excellent spirit must be poor. Meaning to say, you have a desire, a hunger and thirst. You have a healthy stomach, but your stomach has to be empty all the time. If your stomach is not empty, it's not good news for you. No more appetite. If you have no more appetite, you better go see a doctor. Healthy. Right. So, praise the Lord, we don't have a poor stomach, but we want to be poor in stomach. <laughs> we want to be hungry <laughs> in our stomach. 
<laughs> we want to have a healthy appetite for healthy food all the time. That's why after breakfast, lunchtime, you're hungry again, right? You cannot say, oh, I already had a breakfast, I'm not going to eat for one whole week. No, it, it's not going to work like that. No. Right. So praise the Lord. And then to have a pure heart. Right. In the f nature of God's people, you have huh, eight precious points. But among this eight point, two points have something to do with your being, with your spirit, and with your heart. Blessed are the poor in spirit. 中文是灵里贫穷。灵里贫穷. And then blessed are the pure in heart. That a heart must be pure. Otherwise you'll be distracted by so many things. Right. And so if our heart is not right and not pure, the Lord cannot build his kingdom. This is why you have the mystery of the kingdom. The Lord sowed the seed of the kingdom where? Into our heart. And so it depends on whether our heart is right, proper, pure and good, or is it full of thorns? Is it hardened? You know, if the, if the soil is hard, you cannot plant anything. You cannot plant anything. Right? And if it's rocky, full of stones inside, you also cannot plant anything. Then the root cannot go deep. And if the sun shines, the Lord used that parable, then that plant will dry out. So it very much depends on our heart, whether our heart is pure or not. So we have to pray, Lord, give us a pure heart. Amen. Give us a pure heart. Because we didn't have a chance and time to go back into that point. But it's not necessary because that point should be applied to every other point. Because these two matters touches every area of what we are sharing today. So may the Lord have mercy on us. Time is up. I'm sorry to take extra time. But praise the Lord. And I want to also say something. <laughs> Our brother came to me last night. And we had a very wonderful, loving Fellowship. Short, but to the point. And I also apologize because of the misunderstanding. <laughs> My sharing is not clear enough. Right. So, praise the Lord. But we had a wonderful time of fellowship. Amen. Amen. Right. Uh, I really appreciate our brother's frankness. It is really good. Right. So, amen, brother. Amen. <laughs> Great. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> this is a kingdom life. This is really the kingdom life. And we just are one with one another. Yep. <laughs> and I apologize too. <laughs> this is really the way to have the church life. Right? And this is a wonderful experience. As a demonstration to everybody, is that a, a? In the church life, we don't hold anything in our heart. Praise the Lord. Amen. 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 So, hallelujah. Amen. Amen. <laughs>